This video is brought to you by Dev Mountain, a coding bootcamp that offers in-person and online courses in a variety of subjects, including web development, iOS development, user experience design, software quality assurance, and Salesforce development. For more information, consult the link in the description below. In a series of videos, we're going to be looking at a classic problem that pops up in machine learning, which is known as the iris classification model problem. So basically what this is, is it's a problem where you're given a set of different types of flowers, specifically of a species called iris flowers, and you want to classify between certain subspecies of that category of flowers. So we'll take a little bit more of a look as to what this problem is, more specifically with uh, like a Wikipedia page that describes it, some pictures, just to give a bit more of a sense as to the problem that we're actually solving. And then when we understand what the problem is, we're going to take a look at how we can actually make use of machine learning to solve this problem. And more specifically, we'll be taking a look at how we can invoke some of the modules in Python, specifically sklearn, which is something that we'll go through and install in this video. So that way you can use some of the built-in models to classify a given flower as a species of iris. So let's actually dive in a little bit more with respect to the problem. And I should also say that we will be just uh, assuming that you have Python installed in this video. That's the only thing I'm really going to assume. You don't need to have any other modules installed. You don't need to necessarily have an understanding of machine learning or anything like that. We're going to step through this more or less as just kind of a mini series of a use case that might be um, useful to you if you're just getting started in this, if you want to see an application of machine learning, or if you want to see how uh, you can apply, uh, let's say, things in Python to a specific machine learning problem. This is kind of like one of the hello world um, applications that come about in machine learning. So it's a very standard type of problem, something that really does come up quite a bit in this field. So what is this problem that we're trying to solve? So there's a very famous set of data, which is called the iris flower data set. And I just have this Wikipedia page here, which just pulls this up and just talks a little bit more about this data set. And what this is, is it's a set of about 150 records or so. So if I click on the show thing here, this is the data set itself. And each of these entries, each of the entries numbered from one to 150 is a, uh, a specific flower that was let's say recorded. So they took the flower and they found that this particular flower, which had a sepal length, a sepal width, a petal length and a petal width of these uh, numbers here was classified as this particular species of iris, this setosa. And this data set contains three possible types of iris flowers. So there's an iris setosa, which is given by this image here. There's an iris uh, versicolor, which is this one here. And there's an iris virginica. So these are the three types of irises that appear in this data set. And each one of the samples, each one of the flowers that were collected from this data set have the species and also the uh, relative attributes or features, what is what we're going to refer them as, features of each of these samples collected. So one of the things that we'd want to do, one of the things that this classification problem is going to solve is that if we're given a particular flower sample that has some of these uh, attributes here, we want to, based on the data set that we already have, we want to determine what species is the one that we're looking at. So without knowing the species, but with knowing the sepal length, sepal width, and petal length, and petal width, based on the previous instances of data that we've collected, are we able to put this particular sample that we don't know the species into one of the three iris species that we do know it could fall under. And that's the whole goal of this uh, particular small series of videos that we're going to do. We're going to read in this data set, we're going to analyze it, and then we're going to build, um, sort of make use of, I should say, a machine learning model that's provided to us from sklearn to help us classify a sample that we don't know uh, what species, species it is. So this is uh, the data set. It's pretty simple. If you don't know what a sepal is, the sepal is kind of the, um, the stem uh, leading up to the flower part and then the petals are uh, these portions of the flower right here so that that's i think pretty well understood so these are the four attributes sepal length sepal width petal length and petal width and so sk learn this module in python allows us to also make use of some data sets that are uh, kind of classic data sets this being one of them and what we're going to do is we're going to import that as part of sk learn kind of see how that data is presented to us and then um I guess we'll kind of wrap up the video there. So this is just a little bit more information on the data set. Uh, if you want to explore this a bit more, if you want to know about the history, um, this was a data set that was collected kind of in the early 1900s by some uh, botanists, I imagine. So 
uh, or a biologist, it says. So if you want to read more about this, I'll leave the link in the description below. Uh, but let's go back to the code. So I have right here a Python file that I just have a bit more information about what we're going to do, uh, kind of writing, and then sort of the use case. So the use case is, you know, you're a botanist or a biologist, and you have this these four criteria of data for a given iris, and you want to classify that iris as one of the three categories of iris from this data set. So that's kind of the gist of what we want to accomplish in this in this uh, video using sklearn. So the first thing that we're going to do, as I mentioned before, is we're going to use sklearn, which means that we need to install it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my terminal. Uh, I'm in Vim, so I'm just uh, accessing the terminal using the colon and exclamation point and I'm going to say pip install and I'm going to say sklearn so if I do that this will uh, run the command in my terminal you'll notice that all the requirements here are already satisfied because um, I'm getting these messages here if you don't have it installed uh, you will see it install on your machine and the way that you can check out if you actually have it properly installed is we can go ahead and import something from sklearn so what we'll do is we'll say from sklearn.datasets import load underscore iris. So this is going to load or allow us to access the classic iris data set that we were just discussing. Uh, so let's just go ahead and uh, let me just kind of get rid of those characters there. Write this and I'm going to say Python, uh, this is called part one, not pi, run it. Uh, so I'm getting, let's see, so I'm getting an error here. So I think, uh, let's see, did I spell that right? I believe I did. Uh, I believe the reason that we have an issue here is because it should be sklearn.datasets, not data. So let me try that again, give that a run. So we've get, just to kind of clarify here, let me just clear the terminal, clear, run it again just to make sure that we get no uh, error output. That's what you want to see. So if you have it properly installed, you'll see a message like that, and you're good to go. So now what we're going to do is we're going to store the iris data set into a variable in Python. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say iris give a space here iris is equal to load underscore iris and then uh, open parenthesis close parenthesis since this is a function provided to us from this sklearn data set so now let's go ahead and take a look at what this iris object contains so one of the things i can do is access this uh, like a dictionary so if you're familiar with how dictionaries operate in python this data is provided to us in uh, this type of data structure so for instance i can do things like print iris dot keys and so this is going to return to me a list of keys that are part of this data set so if i go ahead and let me just clear the terminal and then run this again if i do this print this out i get a dictionary object in python that has the following keys so we have data target target names descr for description feature names and then file name so very briefly uh, each of these correspond to some component of the data structure. So I'm just going to comment this out here. I'm just going to go over here. Uh, let me just kind of comment that out. And I'm actually going to just go ahead and print out the entire dictionary to screen and kind of explain what each of those keys corresponds to in this dictionary. So there's a lot of output that just happened here, but let's step through it and see what we actually have. So if I scroll up to the top of this uh, dictionary that we just printed out, you notice that the first key here, data, uh, the corresponding value of that key is this numpy array. So numpy is another module in Python that should come with sklearn. Uh, if it doesn't, you can always do pip install numpy. Uh, and just uh, if, if you need any other libraries that should tell you when you install sklearn. Anyway, so the value of this key data corresponds to all of the rows of data from our data set. So for instance, these um, elements here correspond to a given sample where this is the sepal length, sepal width, petal length, and petal width. So these are the features, these are the values that correspond to a feature of a given sample. Likewise, this row down here, this next row is another sample of the iris data set, where again, we have sepal length, sepal width, uh, petal length, and petal width. And again, the reason that I know that those values correspond to this is because I've already taken a look at this data set, and if we scroll down a little bit, I can uh, assess that this is this is the case. So there's about 150 records in here, just like we saw on Wikipedia. Uh, so that is the, the value of the data key field there. The next key field that we saw in our data structure was the target key. And the value corresponding to that is another NumPy array. And this contains uh, an array of values either 0, 1, or 2. So these are numeric um, encodings of what species the particular row corresponds to. So for instance, if we go up to the first row again, the one that we were looking at at the very beginning here, uh, this row right here, there is a species that this is associated to. And in the case of 
this data set, if we go down here to the first, the corresponding first entry of this target array, this is telling us that that corresponds to the species encoded by zero. And in this case, the species encoded by zero is Setosa. And the reason that I know that that is the case is because of this other part of our dictionary structure, which is called target underscore names. So each of the target names are the species. So these are the things that we're trying to predict, right? These are our targets. So we have either Setosa, Versicolor, or Virginica. Those are the three target species that we're trying to classify for a given set of sample data. And each of these uh, numbers, 0, 1, or 2, respectively correspond to either Setosa, Versicolor, or Virginica. And the other key that we saw as part of our data structure was this DESCR. And that is just kind of a description of the data set. So this is just kind of letting us know what is this data set about? Um, you know, what are these things? Uh, maybe some historical information about the uh, data set. So it kind of gives that information here. So this is all the value of the description of the data set. Uh, it also tells you if there's any missing pieces of data in this as well. So for instance, let's just print that out a little bit. Uh, a little bit more, let's just say cleanly. So let's just print out the key of iris that corresponds to the uh, key DESCR. So if we go ahead and print this out, let me just clear the terminal because we have a lot of extra output there. Run this, if we print out this thing, it kind of formats a little bit nicer. And it says that we have you know, the iris data set, kind of gives some characteristics, 150 uh, elements of this data set, four numeric predictive attributes, and the attribute information, like we saw in Wikipedia, sepal length, sepal width, petal length, and petal width. Uh, and then also we have the corresponding species that this could be part of. So again, just kind of gives a little bit more information, stuff that we already knew, but um, there's a lot of other data sets that sklearn also provides to you. And this might be something that you would want to, um, you know, play with as well. So there's also some summary statistics for each of these, uh, each of these elements as well. It tells you if any of these uh, values contain missing attribute values. Oftentimes in non or let's say less than ideal circumstances, you'll encounter uh, fields of data, data that's presented to you that has missing elements. So this is a very nicely formatted data set where the person who collected them uh, made sure to characterize and collect all of the attributes for every sample collected. That is not the case in most scenarios. So this is kind of um, just letting you know that there's no missing data. There's no instance of a sample where uh, like the petal length is missing. And this is kind of another field in and of itself where you need to figure out a good way to determine how to deal with missing values in a data set. So that's well beyond the scope of this video, but you can look at things like imputation uh, for a little bit more context on that. So again, just more information about this data set, uh, a bit of historical context, things that you can find from the Wikipedia page, and also some references as well. So that's pretty much uh, all of that. If I go back to what we had before, so let's just go ahead and say print out iris again, just like we uh, did initially. Let's try that again. So if we go back, print out the entire dictionary, uh, we also, let's, I think that's pretty much all that we've got. The description seems like the last thing. Uh, oh, well, that's not quite true. We also have feature names. So the names of each of the features, that is the sepal length, the sepal width, petal length and petal width, those are the particular names that correspond to each one of the entries in a given sample. And those are the features that we are going to be making use of to predict the target, namely the species that a given sample corresponds to. So that's the Iris data set. There's a lot of other kind of uh, given data sets that sklearn provides to you. There's also lots of um, other, let's say, data set repositories that exist out there on the web, and you can load them in, not using sklearn, but just kind of general Python reading and writing to files, loading them in and analyzing them. Um, and, you know, there's a lot of really good um, data set repositories like UCI, and I'll leave a link to that in the description below if you want some other data sets to check out. I also recommend looking at what other data sets sklearn that data sets provides to you if you want to play around with some other data that might be more interesting to you. And it's just kind of a, uh, some other things that you can you know, leverage from this video and, and sort of go forth and build upon. So anyway, that's just a uh, cursory glance at the iris data set. In the next video, what we're going to do is we're going to unpack that data set and actually make some plots and graphs to kind of understand what the data is telling us.